streaming on the YouTube. All right. So we're going to wait a couple of minutes for people to roll on in here. Um, and we're going to get, we're going to start this off, um, probably in about five to six minutes. I already see some awesome people in this, uh, in this voice chat. And, um, if you want to chat, um, you can feel free to unmute your mic whenever, but if you want to chat, just, just open the chat that's on the workshop, uh, voice channel and we'll be talking in there. So I'm typing hello in it right now. So if you see my hello message, then you're in the right spot. I see Becca's in there. What's up, Becca? What's up, Main Riddle? What's up, Didi? Bonjour, bonjour. Hello, it's different here. It is very different, yeah. What's up, Mrs. Wild Turkey? Where's Wild Turkey? Slacking? Oh, there's Wild Turkey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We got snowmobiles in the house, and uh, oh, what's up, Wild Turkey? Oh shit, I'm talking. <laughs> You're talking. Great to have you. Couple goals, I love it. I'm gonna add a uh, a command to Emerald Bot to to uh, get me a girlfriend. What's up, sweet? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. We got Brett in the house. Although Brett already completed the boot camp, you legend. But good to have your support. Thanks so much for being here. And, uh... Oh, Brett, I also saw you submitted all your quests. Nice. Can we get a round of applause for Brett? Completed the boot camp. I still gotta review that, but... You had to come back. I agree. This is too special over here. It's way too special. <laughs> nice. We got a round of applause in the chat. Great job. Woohoo! All right, so just, I mean, we're going to get started in like four or five more minutes, but just to get a quick uh, a quick little survey here, what um day or chapter are all of you on? It's totally okay if you're not up to chapter two yet, but just to get a little bit of a, 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 a survey here. Chapter two, day one, nice. So you're, you're starting to look at some code, right, DD? Becca says chapter two, kind of day two. So what does everyone think about like, you know, the uh the the content so far? Like are you are you nervous to start coding? Is it like really confusing or what are you thinking about it? Nice, Brave Star. A whole new world. I haven't submitted anything yet, but just finished chapter two day one. Nice, Lone Star. How was it? Was it was the coding difficult or was it alright? I'm not gonna lie. Um, even though these are the beginning chapters, I think the, the biggest struggle is always the beginning of chapter two, because for people that haven't coded that much anymore, it can look really scary, but, uh, you know, that's why we're here. That's why the instructors are here to help you out. It was pretty straightforward. Oh, good, good, good. I'm glad. Okay, good. That's good news. Starting chapter two tomorrow. All right. Nice. Nice. Mrs. Wild Turkey. Yeah. So I hope, I hope the coding isn't too scary, but we're actually... So the, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna we're gonna cover all of chapter one, and then we're gonna cover chapter two, day one and two. So if you haven't done it so far, honestly, this might even be good for you because it'll allow you to you know get a little bit of a head start before you actually start diving in. I see Amethyst in the chat. What's up, Amethyst? I love I love having you back. So awesome. Um, to everyone that's joining, if you don't know where we're chatting, we're chatting in the in the workshop chat. So it's like a new Discord thing they're doing. Um, yeah. DD says they are ready. Nice. We got Captain Cook. What's up? Kill Train, how you doing? Cardo in the house. Woo! -hoo! Sophia, good to see you. Tab Cole, what's up? And he says, woo, -hoo, nice. New chat? Yeah, it's a new chat. I don't know why, but Discord... Yeah, Discord, like, came out with a new update where, like, you can chat in the voice channel, so pretty cool. We got Captain Cook. What's up? Listen to YouTube, probably. Uh, what's up, Zenny? I was just chatting with Zenny in, uh, the Bobbles Discord. Slacker, true. This is Wild Turkey slacking. <laughs> we got it down <laughs> Love that. All right, so we'll give it about one more minute. 
So Wild Turkey, uh, I saw you did a great job with the uh, with the quest so far. Have you coded before? You've never coded before. Wow, that's surprising to me. Is you're doing a great job. So how was it? Like, are you, do you understand? Like, are you understanding variables and functions and that kind of stuff? Can I talk for a minute? Yeah, yeah. I can't type as fast. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, good. No, uh, to answer your question, I, I think I kind of know why I'm doing what you're showing, but I don't really know why I'm doing it yet. Yeah. Or how to do it. Yeah, th that makes sense. Yeah. Makes it's, sense. Um, it's, um, I think uh, over time, wait, let me, yeah. Uh, I think over time, um, like you're at the beginning, it's more of just like teaching you how to do stuff. And then once we get into the later chapters, we'll get into like the why, like how does this relate to like NFTs and actual coding and stuff like that. So just started today. I've gone through your cadence tutorial and your dad videos, so excited to progress through this material. Awesome. So excited to have you. All right. So let's get officially started. We're, we're four minutes over. Uh, what's up, everybody? We're back at it again. Um, I'm streaming on YouTube right now so that we can automatically record. Um, and uh, yeah, so here we are. Okay, so this is our first ever workshop in the June 2022 cohort. Uh, thanks so much, everyone, for being interested in this. And uh, yeah, I mean, we have a long journey ahead. So Becca says, can someone link the stream? Bam, or do you mind, uh, Bam, if you can hear me, do you mind linking the stream? Um, thanks, Bam. So yeah, okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share my screen and on Discord, okay? So share my screen on Discord. And what we're going to do is the way we're going to work through these quests is we're going to open up, you know, the, the content that we're going to review and we're going to, you know, just go through it. Now, um, this is a special workshop because uh, we're going to go over chapter one, which has a lot of like written content. So in future workshops, it's mainly going to be coding, but this workshop is going to be a lot of like, uh, like reading because th it was just a lot of reading. But because I hate reading and I, I, you know, quite frankly, can't read that well anyway, we're going to just sort of skim through chapter one. And I know most of you have done it already. So it'll sort of be like review. All right, let's do it. So day one sort of was like a, you know, welcome to the boot camp, you know, learning about the blockchain concepts and teaching you about what the blockchain is. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to skip some of this information because I don't want to bore all of you, but we're going to walk through the main important points of what the blockchain is. So when we reviewed all of your quests, the main things we were looking for, uh, let, let me make sure to, yeah. So the main things that we were looking for was to make sure you mentioned these things, right? So the book, you know, the blockchain is open, which means that anyone can interact with it. So there's no restrictions. Um, it's decentralized, which means that nobody owns it, right? There's no central authority dictating stuff. So when you think about like Google, right? You know, Google, like you, you ask yourself, like, where do they store all their information? Um, they store all their information in like a private database somewhere, right? Um, that only they have access to. But with the blockchain, it's decentralized. Nobody owns it. So it's it's totally open and, and decentralized. Um, it's also a database. So you can store information on the blockchain, which, you know, for example, your NFTs. Um, and it's also public. So anyone can view the data on it. So what that means is nothing on the blockchain is private. So if you were to store your social security number on the blockchain, you would be hacked in two seconds because anyone can view it. So you can never, ever, ever store private information on the blockchain. Um, and if someone ever asks you to, obviously, you know, say no. Um, unless it's me, of course. You can share all your private keys with me. I would, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, I promise not to hack you, though. Um, but it's public, so anyone can view it, right? So, you know, because of these things, we can interact with the blockchain however we please, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure you read through these parts. Um, but these are the main four important points, right? So open, decentralized database and public. So keep that in the back of your head. Now, you know, this bootcamp is an introduction to Cadence. So Cadence is the smart contract language for the Flow blockchain. So in order to, you know, before we actually dive into coding, you know, let's learn a little bit about what smart contracts are. Um, this diagram is cool because, you know, this yellow thing right here is sort of what a smart contract is. It's basically a rule book or like a set of rules that lives on the blockchain that dictates what you can do and what you can't do. So inside the smart contract is a bunch of, you know, data like your NFTs, uh, you know, other metadata about your NFTs, you know, tokens, uh, you know, other stuff like that. We're going to talk a lot about NFTs in this course just because it's a main topic. But, you know, pretty much all the information on the blockchain lives in smart contracts. Um, and inside those smart contracts are little functions. We call them functions that you can call to manipulate that data and change that data. So 
if someone transfers an NFT, the smart contract actually will change the owner of that NFT, right? Or if you sell your NFT, the transaction and the purchasing of that NFT and the transferring of assets occurs in that smart contract. So smart contracts are basically pieces of code that developers write to make sure that things go properly on the blockchain. And like I said, all smart contracts are totally public, so you can always read the code about them, right? And so why do we use smart contracts? Well, one, they're very fast, they're very efficient, and they're extremely accurate. In fact, they are completely accurate. Um, if you write a smart contract that transfers an NFT, it will always transfer an NFT when told to. Um, there is no, you know, if, if you write it correctly, it will always do the right thing. Um, and in addition, you know, trust and transparency. So because all the data on the blockchain is public, it allows you as the user to read information about it and figure out what it's doing. So if someone tells you, hey, if you click that approve button in Blockdo, it'll transfer the NFT to you. You can, if you know Cadence, go to the code and be like, nope, you're wrong. You're trying to hack me, right? So you can always, you know, view and understand what the contract is doing. But what are some downsides, right? We want to make sure what, you know, we understand what are the downsides. Um, one, it's very hard to get right. So as a developer, which is all of us, because we're going to be learning how to code smart contracts, um, you know, while smart contracts are cool, they are not smart. So they're named pretty poorly because they are actually really dumb. Um, they have to be told exactly what to do. And if they're not told the right thing, it will be pretty bad. <laughs> so if you've, you know, been in the Ethereum space, you've probably heard of a lot of Ethereum hacks, uh, you know, tokens that just like get really hacked or NFTs to get hacked, you know, board apes get transferred into someone else's account. Most of the time, that's because of a smart contract breach and that someone didn't write their smart contracts correctly. So um, that's one thing we're going we're gonna, to, yeah, exactly. So it, you know, like Brad said in the chat, so there was one you know problem where $30 million was stuck in a contract forever, right? And that's because the person who wrote the smart contract left a bug in it, right? They left a problem in the contract that no one saw. So these are the kind of things that, that we want to prevent and we're going to you know think about throughout the entire course. Um, and you know, what, another downside is that smart contracts can be really mean if the developer is mean. So if a developer writes into the code that they're going to steal all your assets, the smart contract will steal all your assets if you click that approve button in the contract, right? And this is sort of why some of you are here today in the course, because, you know, as some of you may know, in a couple, you know, weeks or a couple months, um, permissionless deployment is going to be coming out on the Flow blockchain, which means that any developer can put their own smart contract on the Flow blockchain. And when that happens, there's going to be some people that put some really bad code out there. Um, and so if you, if they tell you to run a transaction and you click approve in your Blockdo or Dapper or Lilico wallet and the smart contract is bad, it will hack you. Um, and so that's sort of why we're in this course as well, to understand these smart contracts better. Um, and then lastly, you can't undo something. So if you do something bad in the smart contract and you sign something you didn't mean to sign, then that's, that's it. It's permanent. So everything that happens in a smart contract is permanent unless you know, you have functionality in the contract to undo it, right? So that's part of the process. All right, so I don't want to bore you guys too much. So I'm going to, you know, sort of speed run through this a little bit. We're going to talk about this a little bit later. But transactions, uh, you know, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the difference between transactions and scripts. The main point here is that transactions change the data on the blockchain. Scripts read the data on the blockchain. And the other important point is that transactions cost gas, which is money, and scripts are free, okay? So that's the other important point. And then uh, the last thing in this chapter is talking about mainnet versus testnet. Um, this is a term that you will hear a lot actually in the blockchain space. Um, but what mainnet means is that's the real deal, right? So all your NFTs, all your tokens, your flow token, your FUSD, everything, um, that's all on mainnet. That's, that's a real blockchain that's out there. Um, testnet is a term that you'll hear a lot. And testnet means it's a blockchain where everything is fake. And developers use that to test their code and applications before they go to mainnet. So, uh, you know, it's sort of in the name, but on testnet, everything is fake. There's no money involved. Transactions are actually free because it's fake tokens. Um, and if something bad happens, no one really cares because it's just testing. And then once you test on the testnet, then you put your code on mainnet. Okay, so I just want to introduce this term to you so that if you hear it out in the blockchain world, that's what it means. <laughs> All right. And then lastly, uh, dApps is a term that means decentralized applications, which are, you know, applications that use smart contracts. So for example, Float, 
um, right? Or, you know, Emerald ID and Emerald Bot, those are applications that use smart contract code. So that's all there was for day one. And um, I'm going to quickly jump into day two because it's actually even faster. Um, in fact, I don't even know if I really want to go over most of this because I know that a lot of you have read it. But I'm going to go over some facts about Flow and then we'll take a quick break and uh, we'll wrap up chapter one. Okay. So, some minor facts about Flow in case you're curious. Um, a tiny little bit of a history lesson. Um, Flow, you know, is, is owned by Dapper Labs. Dapper Labs, they do NBA Top Shot, UFC Strike, right? All these projects. But their first project was called CryptoKitties. Um, and that was actually on Ethereum. And the reason that, you know, the Flow blockchain actually came about was because Dapper Labs, you know, had a tremendous amount of success with CryptoKitties, but they noticed a lot of things they didn't like with Ethereum. And so they made their own language called Cadence, and hence the Flow blockchain was founded, and now here we are learning about it. So um, some facts about it. Flow is much cheaper than Ethereum to do stuff on. So when you're on Ethereum and you mint an NFT, you have to pay like $100 in gas, right, to mint the NFT. On Flow, it's fractions of a cent. So it's a lot cheaper on Flow. Um, another thing is Flow is very new. So there's a lot of things that are still changing. One of which is the fact that, you know, smart contracts couldn't even be deployed on their own the past couple of years, right? They're finally changing that in a couple of months where developers can deploy their own. Um, and they have this other thing, uh, you know, well, obviously, well, I'm not going to talk about this yet, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into what that means in a bit. Um, and then there's Cadence, which, you know, we want to talk about safety and security, clarity, approachability, developer experience. But what all of this really means is that, in my personal opinion, um, Cadence is, you know, a lot easier than Solidity, which is the smart contract language for Ethereum. It's a lot safer. Um, it's a lot more secure. It's a lot easier to read. And the benefit with that, right, that I was looking for in all your quests is that what's so great about Cadence is that it's approachable and it's clear to the user. Um, so if you know even a little bit about Cadence, it's pretty easy to detect when something's going wrong. Um, and it also makes it harder for the developer to mess up, which is a good thing. Um, which is why I think that in the future, I think Cadence will have less hacks because it's actually really hard to mess up your contracts in Cadence. Whereas in, on, in Solidity and the Ethereum world, um, it's actually really easy to leave a problem in your contract, which is you know where all the hacks are coming from. All right. So that's all I'm going to say for chapter one. Does anyone have any questions about that? Or like, it could be literally anything at all about Dapper Labs or Flow or you know, maybe why Cadence is better than Solidity. Does anyone have any questions about this? And if not, we're actually going to start to jump into chapter two here. So I'll pause for like a minute or so if anyone wants to ask any questions. Can you talk a little bit about the four different node types? So that's a that's actually an amazing question. Um, that's probably one of the only questions I can't answer, only because I don't deal a lot with the backend infrastructure of Flow. Um, most of my experience is on the smart contract side, so um, I can't answer that directly. But I can lead you to people who can answer that question, um, JH. So if you want to, uh, I'll I'll help you get that answer as as soon as this uh, workshop's over. Yeah, sure. Sorry about that. All right. Cool. See, we may have one, one or two more questions coming in, so I'll just wait for that. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go to chapter two. Also, you probably noticed that I didn't talk much about resource-oriented programming, and that's because uh, while it is extremely important, this is going to be something we talk about in later chapters. So is Flow Blockchain owned by Dapper or is it a different entity? So Flow Blockchain is, yes, it is officially owned by Dapper Labs. Um, oh, yeah, they actually are like intertwined. Which is sometimes, you know, as, as someone in the community is sometimes a good thing and sometimes a bad thing, I think. So Becca says, I do, I want to get, I want to give away a while back and it never showed up in my wallet. You could see the transaction where it left the outgoing wallet, but it never showed up. Could that have been an issue with contract or transaction? So 
my question to you, so there's actually a few answers here. Um, one of them would be, um, my first question actually is what NFT was it? If you, if you don't mind me asking, because that actually will determine the answer and I'll explain why. Right Club, is that the correct name of the project? Ah, okay. So, so what's interesting about that is, um, I'm assuming maybe you gave them like your block dough address or something. So one of the things we're going to talk about a lot in this course is that, um, the way that cadence is actually written, um, requires that wallets manually enable like the displaying of that NFT. So what I mean by that is for float, for example, um, we had to ask block block dough to display float NFTs in your wallet. So even if you technically own that NFT, there's a chance that Blockdo or whatever wallet address you gave, they don't support displaying that NFT in your wallet. So that's probably part of the reason it didn't actually show up, even if you actually do own it. Oh, it doesn't show up on the website either. Oh, that's weird. Um, so then in that case, Becca, yeah, that is weird. So in that case, what I would say is um, if you can... Uh, send me the transaction code, um, and I'll take a look at that and see if there was some error, maybe. Yeah, maybe tab code. Yeah, that's weird. I I think either Blockto didn't still, like does no longer supports it, or I'm not sure why they would have done that. So Wild Turkey says might have missed the reasoning, but why is Flow going to this permissionless way if it's opening up to more scams and hacks? So the reason for that is because uh, well, two reasons. One, it's to support true decentralization. So if you're going to call yourself a blockchain, you should, you know, be decentralized. And even though they weren't at the very beginning, right, that's just part of like being new and, you know, you want to make sure that everything's safe. So it makes sense that they blocked it for a while, but it does it won't work in the long run. Um, and I think that, I mean, I, I'm not really a financial guy and I don't really deal in crypto a lot, but I would assume that that's why Flow Token also does so bad because it's not a decentralized chain right now. Um and so it's hard for applications to develop if you have to manually get approval every time you have a new contract, which to someone like me is extremely annoying, right? Because I'm a developer, I want to deploy my contracts, but I have to wait a month for Flow to review it every time. So that's part of the reason. And then the second reason is like I was kind of mentioning is that, you know, like you, you developers want to be able to deploy their own contracts um, and they don't want to wait like months and months and months to to get it approved. So that's pretty much why. And, you know, unfortunately, the downside is there will be some scams, but that is part of the process. Yeah, that is weird, Becca. I, I wish I could find the transaction. I'd be so curious to look at that. All right. So we're going to dive into chapter two. Uh, we're going to skip over chapter 1.5 because that was optional. But if anyone has any questions about that, feel totally free to ask away. All right. So. What we're going to do is we're going to load up the Flow Playground and start having some fun. Now, um, if you are from the previous boot camp, um, you, will, <laughs> uh -oh. you will know that um, the Flow Playground tends to have a lot of bugs. So if, if you're from the previous boot camp, do you mind saying hello in the chat and, uh, and saying how many bugs there are? <laughs> uh, just to, so, that, uh, so that you know I'm not lying. So Bread and Bam and BZ can all attest. Uh, yeah, and they're, they're sweet as well. So yeah, and look at Ricardo. <laughs> yeah, so it actually became... Shut up, BZ. <laughs> BZ, I'm going to pull up a screenshot of you saying you ate it. Actually, I think BZ made a comment last boot camp about the playground being like the third wheel of a bicycle, except the third wheel never actually works and falls off all the time. So I'm going to pull up that screenshot and send it to chat. But... um. Anyway, yeah, it became a meme in the last boot camp that the playground never works. So we're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna have to um stick through this together. Yeah. <laughs> Wild Turkey says it almost made me break my keyboard today. That's my first day using it. <laughs> well that's great news. That's great news. Uh wow. Wow. Wild Turkey out. Yeah. Let me screenshot that real quick and send it off to the flow team. <laughs> See if they can get someone working on it. Uh that's great. Um all right, so what we're going to do is, yeah, we're going to start coding. Um, all right, let's do it. So our first smart contract, okay? So we're going to make our first smart contract, right? So how do we do that? 
Um, well, what we have to do is let's follow what I wrote in here. But actually, before we do that, let's talk about what these things are on the left-hand side. So, uh, yes, uh, Vettel, it is the only dev environment on the Flow Paragon, yeah. Um, actually, Emerald City is trying to make another one, but that's a different topic. Anyway, so what the heck is going on here, right? What, what even is the Flow Playground? Like, wh what are we looking at, right? Well, let's, let's talk about this. Um, so on the left-hand side, there are things called accounts. And then there's also, uh, right here, there's transactions. And then on the bottom, there's scripts, right? So it's split into three sections, the accounts, the transactions, and the scripts. So on the left-hand side, we're going to talk about accounts really quick. What, what the heck is an account? Well, um, if you've seen like, you know, the OX, like OX, whatever, whatever, whatever like things that look like that, actually, let me get a real one. Um, let, let me get like mine, for example. So mine is, I'm actually going to use the Emerald bot to get my address really quick. So like this is my address really uh right now. Uh wait, let me Yeah. So so this is my address, right? This is my mainnet address, right? When someone says, "Hey, please send me uh your address," right? You send them something like this. It's a bunch of random numbers and letters. Well, on the Flow Playground, um you know, they have these on the left-hand side. You see 0x01, right? It always starts with 0x cuz it's a hexadecimal uh number, right? So it always starts with 0x, but on the Flow Playground, you'll notice that it's like shorter. And the reason for that is because this is a totally fake environment, right? So none of this is real. It's all fake. That's why the addresses look smaller, because it's easier for us to test with. Um, I'm looking at the chat here. So they just use AOL. Yeah, true. Hello, everyone. I'm very glad that I got on the live box. Oh, hey, yay. What's up? What day? Love that. All right. So anyway, that's what an account is, right? Well, that's an address. Now, every account has an address. So like, for example, you know, this is account... Uh, one, this is account two, three, four, five. All right. And inside of accounts is where smart contracts live. So technically, right, this is my mainnet address. Technically, accounts could uh, or contracts could live in here, right? Contracts live inside of accounts. So when we talk about account one here with address 0x01, um, this is we're going to put a contract inside of it. And then we're going to deploy the contract, which means to actually like send the contract to the account so that it like officially lives there. So that's what an account is. And if you want to, you know, dive into a little bit more, you can read about it in the uh, in this section right here. And in this section, it, it says, where do smart contracts live? Well, they live inside of accounts, right? That's what we just talked about. Okay, so with that uh, being understood, let's actually make our first smart contract. And inside of it, we're not going to store complicated data like NFTs or any of that, because that's really hard. We're going to store a name. That's literally it. And it all oh, actually, we're going to store a greeting. And all it's going to do is say hello hello to us. Okay, that's it. So how do we make a contract? Well, you type pub contract and then the name of your contract. So I'm going to type hello world. Okay, so if you've never programmed before, hello world is like the de facto like beginner name. Okay, so that's what we type. Pub contract hello world and then these brackets. Now pub, we're going to explain what pub means later. But contract is pretty straightforward, right? This just means that we're making a contract and we're calling it hello world. All right. Now... Inside of here, we want to make what's called a variable, okay? So a variable is what holds data. It holds information. So the way we do that, and you don't have to worry about, like, like the syntax yet, which the syntax is, like, the, the, the stuff I'm typing. Just, just all you have to know is that this stores data. So public var uh, greeting equal, uh, is a string, okay? So, again, you don't have to, I'm going to explain what this means in a second, but let me just type some stuff out, and then I'll explain what all this means uh, in a second, okay? So what, what I just did, right, what I just typed in my screen was I typed public var greeting is a string. This means that greeting is a variable, okay? So I'm going to type a comment. Greeting is a variable, and it is a string type. So a string is like a word. It, it's like a, it's text, okay? So like, for example, an example of a string is like, hello, or uh, you stink, or uh, BZ is a fake and a fraud, um, or wild turkey is slacking, right? So it, it's it's words. That's what a string is. Um, however, an integer. So if I had typed int here, right? Let's say I had typed int. That's a number. So for example, zero or negative ten or twenty four or whatever that number is, right? So that's the difference. Okay. So this is our type. We call this a type. Um, so this is the type of our, you know, variable here. So you'll notice that right now, 
um, I made greeting, and I'll talk about what init means in a second, but greeting, right, is a, um, oh my god, VZ, <laughs> VZ, are you exposing me right now? Are you kidding me? Um, so you'll notice that right here, um, I set greeting to a string called hello world. Now, what do you think is going to happen if I change this string to int? What's, is, is it going to be okay? Is, is this program going to like that? If I, anyone have any guesses in the chat, if I change this string to int, what's going to happen? And also you're, you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to do it. Okay. Nice. 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 Won't interpret, right? So we, everyone in the chat is saying error and let's, let's try it. So if I type int, oh, we got it. We an error mismatch types expected integer got string. So, you know, of course, if we replace this with like a hundred, right, it would work because it's, it's, it matches the type, but we want it, we want it to be a string. Okay. Um, var. So I didn't talk about what var means. Var just means it's a variable. So like it stores data and public, we're going to talk about later. So don't worry about that. Um, and then cool. Okay. Awesome. So what this init means, like what, what that, what, what the heck does this init mean? Well, this init means that this is going to get run. So it's going to do this thing, right? Set greeting equal to this when I click deploy. Okay. So an init function always runs when you initially like create something. So when I click deploy, that's going to take this whole contract and actually create it and put it inside of account one, which is when this init function is going to get run. Okay. So right now, You'll notice that uh okay so i'm going to click on deploy and it says yay deployed contract to account one so now this contract officially lives inside of this account and our greeting variable is now equal to hello world because it this function was run double thumbs up we did it so that's that now i'm going to ask all of you this sort of like a cool little mini quiz if we want to read this greeting right if we want to read this, should we run a transaction or a script? And you can't answer if you've already if you've already completed the bootcamp. So if you're a graduate, you can't answer. Script. Look at that. Nice. We're learning. We're learning. Round of applause. Round of applause. Everyone got it right. If you had typed transaction, I would have banned you. So um, just want to keep that in mind. So, <laughs> all right, all right. So, and BZ's banned. Uh, Bam. Can you ban him? Ban BZ. All right. Cool. Just kidding. <laughs> um awesome so good job everyone so we, we're gonna run a script so we're gonna go down to the bottom here we're gonna go to this script right here and we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of everything and we're gonna actually try and read what our greeting is okay so that's that's the next part of this so let's go down we already did all that wow nice we're we're full steam ahead right now okay so what i told you to do is i told you to type this code but we're gonna explain why okay so what we're gonna do is Every time you run a script, and I, I mean like literally every time, you have to write this, public function main, these little parentheses, and then these brackets, okay? So this is a function that when we click on execute, it's gonna run whatever is in here, okay? So that's how we have to run that. You always write the exact same way, public function main. Now what this means is, again, public, we're gonna explain later. Function means it's a function, and this is the name. So it has to be named main or else it won't, it won't run, okay? So inside here, we need to read the greeting from the hello world contract. So in order to do that, we have to, you know, tell our program what contract we're looking at. So the way to do that is to type import hello world. That's the name of our contract from, and then what, what, right? Like what account are we importing it from? Which, which of these accounts are we getting it from? Any guesses? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. DD. So one, so we have to put, we have to put one here. Okay. Because we put our contract in one, so that's how we that's how we tell our program what contract we're looking at. So now inside of our function, we can say, you know, return. So that means re return means that we're going to give something back to the user. So I'm a user, right, and I want to know what the greeting is. So I'm going to tell the function return or give me back that information. So return hello world, and then dot greeting. Okay, and look, it even like it even populates it for us. So if I type dot, it even it even says, oh, greeting here. Perfect. Okay. So hello world dot greeting is how we get this variable, right? It's the hello world contract, and then inside of it is greeting. So hello world dot greeting. All right. Now the last step is it's saying mismatch types expected void got string. And that's because we didn't tell our program 
what the type of the return value is. So like I said, we're returning a hello world dot greeting. So uh, one last question I'll ask you all is what is the type of this? We talked about it in a couple minutes ago. String. Good job, all. Good job. So it's a string. So the way that we type that is colon and then the type, which is string. All right. So perfect. We did it. So now if I click on execute. Oh my God. And the playground. The, oh my God. It's already started. It's already started. The playground's already killing us. It's how is it already started? There's no way it's already begun. <laughs> I can't believe this, but let's try it again. Let's try it again. Execute. It worked. It worked. It worked. Okay, we're, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. So we're going to click execute and look what we got. It says, oh, look, the type of the return value is a string and the value is hello world. Yay. We did it. Woo. 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 We did it. That's awesome. And if we were to go in here and, um, you know, change this to uh, DD. What's up? Right. I'm going to click on deploy again. So we're going to, we're going to redeploy the contract. This, oh, it deployed. And if we go back to our script, right. And we click execute. Now it's going to return. Oh my God. The playground. I can't, I can't, I can't do this. I, it's so, it's insane. It's actually insane. We need the flow team in here ASAP. We really need them in here as soon as possible. Let me try to refresh the page actually. I might have to plan to actually change, to actually go off the playground next workshop if this keeps happening. Okay, well, there he is. Okay, so it says, DD, what's up, right? So we did it. <laughs> yeah. No, Tab Cole, you are, you are not alone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Becca, you're going to need some patience. No, but what I'm going to try to do is um, I'm going to try to figure out a solution to this. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to try my best, okay? So, yeah, when in doubt, uh, either click the save button up here. So I already clicked it, so I can't, I can't click it again. Or copy your code, like highlight all of it and copy it, and then refresh the page just in case it deletes it. So refresh the page and then paste it back and try again. All right, so looks like it's going to become the meme of this boot camp too. That's, that, that's just great. We love to see that. All right. How's everyone doing? We got any questions? Any questions in the chat? Like why we're doing hello world dot greeting or why we typed string here? Feeling good? All right, Didi. All right. Nice. Everyone's feeling good. Coding. Let's do it. So is everyone else? Everyone else all right? Everyone else dead? Bored? Unbelievably bored? <laughs> Becca's good. All right, Becca. Nice. Wild Turkey's good. Dehane is good. D3P Flow. Love that name. Tab is good. Alright, so Lone Star said, I'm sorry this is for another time, but I'm still stuck on the Emerald Bot displaying your... Oh, okay, I'll, I'll get that. I'll get that after, yeah. Too much time is spent. Like an just playing your wallet. Actually, wait, Lone Star, now you have me curious. What do you mean by that? It's displaying your wallet address. I, I can't, now I can't keep it out of my head. Nice. All right, cool. So, yeah, that is, that is it for this. Uh, that's it for this. All right. Cool. So, on to day two, and then after we complete this, then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, I think Lone Star, I think I just uh, misunderstood your question about just what like what displaying means. Jacob is awesome. Facts. Someone someone tweet that. Someone tweet that. That is a fact. Yep, exactly. Exactly, Lavishy. Tweet that and retweet that. That's what that's what I'm saying. Someone screenshot that as soon as possible. Someone screenshot that that we can send it to the flow team after this bootcamp's over. <laughs> Love that, Phoenix. That's what I'm talking about. That's what, that's what the energy I need. 
Good screenshot, Didi. That's what I'm talking about. Nice. Right, let's go. And how is BZ not banned yet? Anyone know? All right. The transactions and scripts. <laughs> Hashtag fit. All right, turn that. All right, we gotta stay focused here. We're we're getting we're getting lost. All right, here, so we're back. Um, you guys can't distract me. I have, I have a really really short attention span. All right, we're back. So transactions and scripts, right? So you already kind of know the general idea, right? Transactions cost money. Scripts are free. Transactions change the blockchain. Scripts view the blockchain, right? So so who who loved this diagram I made? This little person wants to modify or view the blockchain. So they send a transaction, and then this script views the blockchain, but both of these interact with the smart contract, right? That, that's, the, that's the point. Um, so, didn't know you were an artist. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, Becca. Exactly, yeah. Sometimes I feel like when you're learning, though, I feel like this is, like, better, though, isn't it? Like, more, like, simple, down-to-earth stuff? Anyway. Um... Yeah, so we already talked about the differences between these two, so you, you, all of you already know this, so we can skip that too. Um, but I also made a little... <laughs> God, now I'm laughing, because Becca's going to make fun of this again. But this is a little diagram... <laughs> oh, God, I'm already laughing. I can't... I, now I can't focus. Oh, no. Oh, no. But basically, this is a little diagram I made. <laughs> I'm laughing at a little person I drew. Um, but basically, I wanted to show you what a trans... <laughs> I can't... Oh, my God, I can't talk. Uh, but this is what a transaction does, right? So, this is... The th I can't... I, like, have the giggles now. So, it's, like, a three-step process. <laughs> oh, God, I can't... I can't, I can't talk. Oh, it's too funny. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why. It's, like, it's like one of those moments where, like, you just, like, have the giggles and I can't... <laughs> oh, my God. Becca's fault. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm so... <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Sorry. I'm back. I'm so sorry. Alright, so it's a transaction, okay? So, so the point is that a transaction modifies data, right? So you have a so you have a smart contract, and in the smart contract you have a total supply. Okay? And the total supply is 10. So I don't know, like you know, in our example we had a greeting, right? So this was a variable that stored information. Um, and this stored, you know, DD, what's up, okay? Now, you can imagine that in this contract, the total supply, imagine this is some, like, um, <laughs> uh, stop, Tab. <laughs> so imagine this is, like, you know, an NFT contract, okay? And, and the contract wants to keep track of what the total supply of the NFTs are in the contract. So it says total supply is 10, okay? Now, here comes the person, and, you know, so this is, like, you know, you're on some website and you mint a float, right? So so you mint a float, okay? And you go and you click claim float and you click mm -hmm. on, you know, you click approve, right? You know when that transaction pop-up comes up? Everyone know what I'm talking about? And you click approve. That means you're sending a transaction, right? You're saying, I want to, you know, execute this transaction. So the person does that and then the smart contract will mint the NFT, right? It'll create it. And so what happens is the, the data gets changed from... 10 to 11, right? Because now the total supply of the floats is 11, right? So this is a little example of like what a transaction actually is doing and what the process is like. So it's pretty straightforward, right? But anyway, God, that was so, so funny. I cannot hold it together. Um, So we're going to actually write a transaction now, okay? So let's go ahead and we're going to make a function. <laughs> we're going to make a function to change this greeting because before... When I just modified this, that that's that's not what you want to do. I was just showing you that to to show you, but you never want to just change this to change the variable because in the real world, when you actually deploy a contract to mainnet, you can't you can't redeploy it, right? So you can't do that. This only ever happens one time. Okay, so for example, the float contract, I can never just redeploy that. So this function will never get run again. So you actually have to have another function that you can call in a transaction to change the greeting. So let's make a function called change greeting. It's going to take in a new greeting, which is a string. And I'll explain all this in a second. And then it's going to say, actually, I'll leave that for, let me read Becca's question. So total supply is equal to the number still available or the number that have been minted. Oh, it can, so Becca, it, it depends on what you want. Um, but like, for example, in this contract, I was, I guess I was assuming that it, it's the number that have been minted. Um, 
but in you know you could theoretically you could make it whatever you want if you know you're the developer um anyway yeah so we're gonna make a function to change the greeting now so we have public i'll explain that in a bit function which means it's a function so it's not a variable right it's a function that actually does something and we're calling it change greeting and what this means is that we're 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 passing in like to the function we're telling it what the new greeting is right mm -hmm. so that inside the function we can say self.greeting which is this greeting right here equals the new greeting okay so again what this is going to do is it's going to take in a new greeting and it's going to set the current one equal to the new one. So, everyone all right with that? Cool beans? Okay. All right, we're all cool. We're all cool. Becca says, eh? Okay, okay, I'll explain it again. I'll explain it again. So, see, because can your argument be named greeting or is there a name clash? So, it actually can. Um, and that's where the self comes in. So, we actually can name this greeting. We can. Um... Because self.greeting refers to the thing above it, which is this, where greeting refers to the local variable. But um, I don't want to confuse people with that, so we'll, we'll keep it separate. So Brad says, what's the difference between passing something in the parameters versus writing it in another line of code inside of the function? So if we were to write it, if I understand correctly, if we were to write it in here then the user would never be able to pass in a new greeting, right? Because you would, you would have to hard code it. You have to say, like, var new greeting, like, equals hello. But then if we didn't have this, and every time this function is run, it would just set it to hello every time. But allowing it to be passed in as a parameter makes it so that you can, you can pass in anything you want, and it'll change it to that thing. So I'm going to re-explain it, because I know some people got lost, which is totally fine. But what this is, is... so. Again, this is a this is a piece of data, right? This is it's a it's a variable. It holds information. More specifically, it's holding information about our, you know, what what the greeting is, right? So when we deploy the contract, it's a DD what's up, but you know, if you're, if we want it to hold something else. So to do that, you can call a function. Now, this function will do something. Okay, that's what a function does. It it, it just does something. And we we're going to call it in a second, but I'll do that later. Um and it, what it does is it takes in a new greeting to change it to. And then it says self.greeting, which is the one up here. Because self means the thing above it. So self.greeting equals the new greeting that we pass in. So for example, if it's if, if greeting is currently DD what's up, and we pass in a new greeting that says Becca what's up, it'll change it to Becca what's up. So it, does everyone understand like the general idea? And then we'll actually, okay, cool, cool. Uh, I'm glad. Awesome. Now, one more thing I want to mention, and this is sort of irrelevant, but it's, uh, it's good to bring up now. There's a difference between var and writing let. So if you write let here, what that means is you're not allowing this to be changed. So you'll notice I change it to a let. Yeah, yeah, I know, Becca. It's hard to, it's hard to keep track of them. So if we, if we make this thing let, right? So initially it was var. If we change this to let, what that means is that this thing is now a constant, which in programming means that you can no longer set this to a different thing. So inside of our function, you'll see there's an error now. Cannot assign to a constant member. That means that, you know, it's the contract isn't liking this anymore, so we can't deploy it because it's a constant. And so we're not allowed to, like, give it a new value. So var means that we can change it. All right. That's just a, oh, this is a little note in case you ever see public like let, right? That means you can't change it, but public var means you can. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to deploy this. Oh, got to love the playground. I'm going to... Uh, all right. So we're going to try a new account. We're going to try account two now. All right. That's what we're going to do. We're trying account two. All right. It worked. Okay. So it works in with account two now. So... Let's go to our script and let's let's import it from account two. Remember, because I just had to fix that really quick. So we're in account two now, okay? So if I click on execute, we, we already wrote this code, remember? It returns. Oh, no. Wow, I need the flow team to fix this. I really need them to fix this. This is really not good. 
This is not good. Um, I might have to make it a playground. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out a solution to this because I can't have all of you going through this process. It's gonna kill your confidence. It's gonna kill your confidence. Um, but I'm trying here. I, I'm trying a new playground to see if it works. Okay. And then please work. Please, 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 please. Okay. So, uh, hold on, I gotta catch up on the chat. Um... Um, oh yeah, so I, we're gonna talk a little bit about scope later, um, and that's more of like a, not complicated, but it's more, it's like, it's a little bit more complex than where we are right now. No, no, it's totally fine, I, I'm so glad you guys are having the conversation, um, but I just wanna let you know that if you are confused, we'll talk a little bit about it later, um, but scope refers to, like, what, like, where things are, you know, like, value, like, a uh, valid, um, so yes, like this new greeting is scoped to this function, right? Whereas self dot greeting points to the thing above it. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so let's let's go back to. Uh, oh, what I just click something. What I just click. Okay, we're back. I guess I don't know what the heck I just clicked. <laughs> um, cool. So we're gonna write a transaction now because we want to change the data, right? We want to change the data. So let's go ahead and uh, go back to our little thingamabob over here. Um, and this is what a transaction looks like. So remember, you know, with a script, it looks like public function main, right? You always write that. With a transaction, it always looks like this. Transaction, there's a prepare thingy, and then an execute thingy. Now, we'll talk about what these mean in a bit, but let's ignore that for now. Um, for now, let's just, let's just do what we're told. So write transaction. Okay, open up some brackets. Write prepare, and then put this thing called the signer. In here and again you do not know have to know what this means we'll talk about this at a later point you just have to put it there and then and execute so what's going to happen is you know one more time we're going to worry about this later so don't think about that but let's focus on execute so execute is this is what all the code inside of here so all the code in here will get run when we send the transaction okay so when i click on this send button it's gonna run everything in here, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. Now, what we wanna do is we already wrote the code to change greeting, right? It's right here. So does anyone have any guesses? How do we actually call this function? Anyone have any guesses? In the script, right, to get the greeting, we did hello world.greeting, right? Hello world.greeting. So any guesses on how, we, how we, we're gonna call this function called change greeting? Any guesses? Yep, close, CD. You're really close. Good, nice. I like that. Nice, Jay. Nice, Jay. I'll call you Jay if that's okay. Nice. Yep, so DD's really close. Jay got it. So, actually, close. I, Jay is almost there, but I mean, pretty much exactly what I was looking for. Import yes, good good stuff. So that's a good note too. So I was I was actually gonna show the error and then say why, but let's let's uh, let's do that first. So in order to get in order to call the function, right, you do hello world dot change greeting. Okay, so let's do that. Do hello world dot change greeting. But uh oh, there's a problem. Cannot find variable in the scope. Hello world is not found. Well, it's not found because we never imported the code. So import hello world from account one. Right, and now what we can do is uh, just to show you this again. We can type "hello world," and then if I click dot, it's actually going to come up. Look, oh look, there's change greeting. So we can click on that, and it automatically does stuff for us. So what did it just do? Well, it opened up some parentheses, right? And now we can pass in our new value. So we can put in here. Let's put in what's up, Becca? Right. So we're going to put this in here, and this is going to get mapped to this little variable here, new greeting. So what's going to happen is, right, it's going to be in here, and then in our what's going to happen in our contract is that's going to get passed in right here, right? What's up, Becca? It's going to put that in new greeting, put that right here, and then set self.greeting equal to that. And then it's going to change this variable. 
that make sense on like a conceptual level? Hopefully it does. So we're gonna type in what's up, Becca? So why does Cadence make you name the arguments? Uh, it's a great question. Um, it just does. Uh, to be honest, it, it, I think it's because it wants you to be very like you're gonna notice this theme actually throughout Cadence. It's extremely secure, like extremely secure. Um, so it makes you be extremely explicit about literally everything. So you're going to notice this theme throughout the bootcamp, but yeah, it's because of security. All right. So if I click on send here, right, I'm going to click on send and, and, um, do I want to talk about this now? Actually, yeah, I will. We have a few minutes. So you're probably asking like, does it matter what account I send it from? The answer is not right now. No, but we'll talk about this in a bit. But you can imagine that, like, in a real-world scenario, right? Like, let's, let's go to Float, actually. Uh, well, do I want to... Uh, what's, a, what's a good example where I could run a transaction? Anyone have any, like, real-world examples where I could run a transaction? I can, like, show this in a real-world scenario. What's a platform I can do that? Actually, yeah, let's, let's go to Float. Let's go to Float really quick. Okay, so let's, let's say I'm on Float and I'm creating a new event, right? Like, what's up? Uh, GG, GG. And I upload a random file. I don't know. Okay, so it's, I'm random, okay? Let's say, oh, let me connect my wallet first. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so this is a real-world example, right? So when I click on Create Float, what it's doing is my account is sending a transaction. So Create Float, right? Uh-oh, it, it's initializing, it's initializing, right? It's thinking, and then it says, oh, look, confirm transaction, right? So when I click Approve here, this is the exact same thing as me clicking Send right here. It's sending a transaction to the blockchain. And what it's doing is it's modifying the data in the blockchain, right? You know, more specifically in this real world scenario, it's modifying the contract to create this event, right? So of course, I'm not going to approve this, but that's what this is doing, okay? So back to our example, um, because we're in a dummy example, you can choose any account you want. So I'll also choose this person and click send. And boom, it's sent. So it, it stopped pending. Now it's all good to go. So if I go back to my script now, and I click on execute, bada bing, bada boom, it says, what's up, Becca? Because we changed it. So what if I want to change it again? Let's change it to, uh, hello, idiot. And send it. Okay, it sent it. Go back to our script. And let's click execute again. Hello, idiot. So you'll notice it's changing the data. Right? And that's exactly what we wanted to do. How's everyone doing? Pretty good? Does that make sense, everybody? Beck is good. Nice. Brett's good. Nice. Tab's good. Let's go. All right. So we're going to take it one step further. And by the way, if you understand all this stuff, that's really great because that means that you're pretty much through, you know, chapter two, day two at this point. We're going to take it one step further. Right now, you'll notice that when I send this transaction code, I'm hard coding. And, and by the way, what hard coding means is it means you're like manually putting in the data, which is like really annoying. Um, so this transaction kind of stinks because in like a real world scenario, right? it would just always change it to hello idiot, right? Because, you know, a, a regular user is not going to go in here and just like manually change the transaction code, right? So the way to do that is to make a new variable up here called like user input, right? And we're going to make it a string, okay? So you'll notice that I added something called user input and it, pop it automatically made a little input field for me to put something here. So I can change this. Remember before it was like, it was like, what's up, Becca? Right now I'm going to change this to user input. So it's going to take whatever I put in user input. It's going to pass it here. And then this is going to go down here. Okay. So if I, if I type in here, yo, and send it. Are you serious? Okay, well, Wild Turkey got into this problem and he said it works, so let's try it. I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's gonna work, but we can always try. Anyway, you get the point. It should change it to yo, right? Okay, well, it didn't, but it should. Um, let me refresh the page again. 
please. Okay, it went through. So I, I put please. Let's go to the script. And it is... Please. Okay, so we did it. There we go. Playground is beating me. It's definitely beating me, McJam. All right. So cool. Everyone good? So Tab says, why sometimes after self, you have equals and sometimes uh, dash? I think, I think I actually always have equals. I don't think I ever have the uh, little dash. Unless I miss, unless I'm misunderstanding tab. What's the difference between equals and equals equals? So um, that's a great question. So uh, to uh, to everyone that doesn't know what equals equals is, like you've never seen it before, like don't worry about it for now. But um, what equals does is equals assigns a variable. So for example, you set self reading equal to another thing, so it changes the variable. Equals equals is a comparison. So for example, if e uh, true equals equals false, then do this, do this code, but this will never work because true is not equal to false. So equals equals is a comparison, but equals is an assignment. But if you don't know that, d yeah, don't worry. It looks different in public function versus init. Ah, so, so maybe you're talking about why does init not have public function? Um, that's just a cadence thing. Actually, wait, oh, oh you're talking about the equals stuff? So let me zoom in a little bit. So maybe this will help. But yeah, they're, they both are equals. Yeah, that is strange. Sorry about that. All right. So hope everyone, uh, hope everyone's doing good. Um, the last quest here will ask you to basically do the exact same thing as we did, except instead of a greeting, it wants you to make a thing called my number, and then you're gonna have a function that changes my number. So pretty much exactly what we did today. All right. That's about it. So, thanks so much for the laugh, everyone. <laughs> I was I was literally crying on my computer. Um, I'm sure we're gonna have a lot more fun throughout the boot camp, and uh, that's all I have. That is all I have. Keep submitting your quests. We'll keep reviewing, and um, <laughs> Becca says I'll draw your slides next time. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah, thank all of you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you on Friday. If you can't make the Friday one, don't worry about it. It'll also be recorded, but see you Friday, and make sure to always thank your instructors for doing such an amazing job. Bye, everybody. Peace out. Peace.